All right, here's a somewhat challenging Atwood machine because it has three moving pieces in it. Now, if I go through and start labeling all the forces on this, I have gravity pulling down on this two kilogram mass. I'm just going to put the numbers into the diagram. It's 19.6 newtons. And this is a light pulley. And so the tension in this side of the string is the same as the tension in that side of the string. That's one of the unknowns I'm looking for. That tension pulls to the left on this mass. This mass has gravity pulling down on it. And I think that's 29.4 newtons. I'll double check real quick. Yeah, that's right. And then I have a normal force. The reason I care about this is because I have kinetic friction in this problem. Normal force. It's a perfectly level surface with nothing else tampering in the, with the vertical direction. So that's got to be equal to mg in this case. Uh, the whole system is accelerating this way, so sliding to the right. Um, I started from rest, and then it broke loose and slid to the right. So my kinetic friction force will point to the left. And that's going to be given by mu k times the normal force. Okay, so we'll get a number on that too. So that's 0.3 times 29.4. There's no problem with putting numbers up in your um, force diagram as long as there's room for it. So I get 8.82 newtons for the friction force. Okay, and then the reason this thing is accelerating to the right is because T2 must be exceeding the sum of those two leftward forces, but that's an unknown for now. And then I have gravity pulling down on the five kilogram mass. Mg is going to be five times 9.8, which is 49 newtons. And again, T2 is pulling up on that mass. And I'm going to draw T2 shorter than 49, or at least I tried to, because I know the 49 newtons must be greater than the upward tension here. Otherwise, the 5 kilogram mass wouldn't be accelerating. So I'm going to get my accelerations in. All right, this mass is accelerating upward. So the most common mistake that I see on, on this problem is to assume that T1 is equal to 19.6 newtons. But if that was true, the acceleration would be zero. So that can't, that can't possibly be right. This one, acceleration is down. And then one of the lessons we've learned about Atwood machines is that you want to do the Newton's second law analysis of each mass using a direction of positive corresponding to the actual direction of the acceleration. And if you don't know which way it's accelerating, you at least have to choose it consistently. You have to assume one direction is positive and analyze all of the objects that way. If I were to use a, a coordinate system like this, upward is positive on the five kilogram mass, it would result in a negative acceleration. And so A would be negative here, but positive in these other equations. And it makes the algebra impossible. It's a contradiction. So watch out for that. Make sure you're going to come out with the same sign for A for all three objects. Okay, so there's all the force diagrams. And then the second major part of the setup is to apply Newton's second law to every one of these masses. So to be organized about it, I'll just say the 2 kilogram mass. Let's write down F net equals MA. Maybe I'll even just do that as a title over this list. F net equals MA is what I'm going to do to every single mass. So what's the net force on the two kilogram mass? T1 positive minus 19.6 equals size of that mass, which is two times A. What about the three kilogram mass? Right word is positive, T2 pulls to the right. T1 pulls to the left. That is an unknown that we're trying to solve for in this problem. Again, we're trying to find both tensions and the acceleration. And there's another force to the left. That's the kinetic friction. And I already found out what the magnitude of that is, so I'll plug it in. So there's F net, and it's equal to the size of that mass multiplied by the acceleration. 
What about the five kilogram? Downward is positive there in order to make A positive. So I have 49 newtons down minus T2 pointing up equals five times A. So I've set it up so all of these A's are positive. If you have one of these being negative and the other is positive, you cannot solve the system of equations. All right, what we're looking at is a system of three equations and three unknowns. And I'm going to solve for all three of the unknowns. That's T1, T2, and A. If you have a little bit of linear algebra in your background, you could get really sophisticated and sort of systematic about how you solve this sort of system. But generally, we're able to get away with using substitution. So I'm going to try a substitution method. Um, if I were to eliminate the T1s from the first two equations, that would give me an equation containing only T2 and A. If I then combine it with the bottom equation, I'm able to solve that as a system of two equations and two unknowns. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add the first two equations to get here. Let me just number them to make it easier to, to communicate what I'm doing. I'm taking equation one and adding it to equation two. And when I do that, the, T's, the T1s eliminate, and I end up with T2 minus 19.6 minus 8.82 is equal to 5a. So I should go ahead and combine the constants there. And that's t2 minus 28.42. Doesn't hurt to keep a little extra precision in the middle of the calculation. Equals 5a. Suppose I call that equation 4. And I'm going to take that and add it to equation 3 and when I do that the T2's eliminate and I end up with 49 minus 28.42 equals 5a plus 5a that's 10a and if I solve for a out of that I've got my first unknown and it's 2.06 2.06 meters per second squared positive all right then I can go back to to all these other equations that I started with sub in the a and figure out what my other unknowns are so I'll start by going into equation one that's up here and I'll solve for t1 I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here just so we don't get too tangled up Space is tight, so we'll use a little divider. I get T1 is equal to 19.6 plus twice A, but A is 2.06. So T1 is going to be 2 times 2.06. And I get 23.7 for that, 23.7 newtons. And then T2, um, where's the easiest place to solve for that? Let's see. I could go ahead and solve out of equation 4. So T2 is going to be 5A. I'm going to go ahead and put the number in. 5 times 2.06 plus 28.42. And I'm going to round this to three sig figs just as, as my usual convention unless we're focused on sig figs. And I get 38.7 newtons for that. 